Hi, my name is John and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about breakpoints in Visual Studio Code. One thing I found that can really affect a programmer's productivity, and I see this with junior developers an awful lot, is the ability to debug a program really quickly. When you start off, you start using print statements, and that's a really, really inefficient way to debug things. So we're going to use Python in this example. And so go ahead and make sure that you've got the Python extension installed. And once you do, what we're going to do is create a, a debug configuration. And that's going to allow us to run Python programs inside of the IDE itself. So go ahead and click on the run and debug icon. And then we're going to go ahead and create a launch.json file. The Python extension will give you a couple of options here. You can just run a normal Python file. You can also create configurations for things like Django, Fast API, Flask, Pyramid. In this example, we're going to just make a normal Python file, and there you go. You have a Python file that's called current file, for example. Let's remove the Python to make it a bit clearer. When we save it, it will appear here on the top left as current file. And that will just run whatever file uh, happens to be open at the time. And for example, if we try to run the launch.json file, it's going to say, I don't know what you're talking about using IntelliSense. It's looking at these comments here and it doesn't understand. But if you use them in a genuine Python file, it's going to work. So I have a basic Python script here. I could do something like hello is equal to um, GitHub Copilot. It's going to help me out a little bit here and make this quicker. And then we can print hello, hello being hello world. And then you just need to click this run button and the debugger will work. That's the debugger. You can see the output here. Now, a lot of programmers actually, they just use print statements to debug code. You know, for example, I might want to say, mm, I'm having an existential crisis is equal to copilot figures. There is no spoon from the matrix. So if I print existential, blah, 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 and then I can get there is no spoon, etc., etc., And that's perfectly fine for something this simple. The problem starts arising when you have very, very complicated code bases. You can't use print statements all that much because even modifying code isn't always what you want to do. Sometimes you're just reading code and you're running it and you want to hunt through and see what the code is doing. With Visual Studio Code, it's very easy. If you set things up inside of this launch.json file, then you can just click right here on any line number with a, a red dot, and trying to run this again will stop wherever you want it to stop. So instead of having hello, I can just um, keep hello as a variable and access it from inside of the console. Now, a cool thing that you can do, and this is what I do at work 500 times an hour, is use the debug console. If I've stopped things in a particular place, then I can actually just type them out and say, hello, what is hello? What is the value of hello? And that really, really helps me to debug things. So just a real quick word about the debugger itself. You have this little window right here. And it has a play function, which will just continue execution of the program until the next breakpoint. If I run it again, we have a couple of other options. One is to enter into uh, a sub function, a little bit more on that later. Stepping over just moves the code forward line by line until it finishes. You can restart the code and then it will end up back at the same breakpoint again. And you can stop the code execution. So we'll go into a slightly more complex example now, and we'll go into a Fast API application. Fast API is uh, relatively new. It's been around for about five or six years, I would say. And it's kind of a replacement for Flask in that it's probably a better option in this day and age for making APIs. It's really, really intuitive. And the simplest version of an application in Fast API is something like this. We have two endpoints. One is hello, and you're going to say hello. You're going to dive into this greeting class, and you're going to use a method called say hello. And then pretty similar for another method that's called say goodbye. And that's all there really is to it. If we wanted to run the Fast API, Fast API application, we can do something very similar to what we did before. Down here on the bottom right-hand side, uh, you would just add configuration. And we want a Python configuration. We want it to be a Fast API configuration. 
and Visual Studio Code will assume some defaults. For example, it'll assume that the app is called main. In our case, our app is actually called API, and then uh, app is the name of the instance of FastAPI itself, so that doesn't need to change. It will run with UVCorn, so make sure that's installed. But then when I go to run the application, and here I need to change from current file to fast API, and then run it, it will just pop into the terminal itself and it will uh, create the app server uh, in a development environment. So I can click on that and I can just open a browser and it will, you know, if I go to, for example, the goodbye endpoint, it's actually just gonna jump back into Visual Studio Code at, a, at the breakpoint that I set it at. Now you have various controls with the breakpoint as before. Uh, one thing that you can do is just continue. And that will keep going until the next breakpoint. So let's say I set another breakpoint here and I continue it onwards. It will stop there. And that's the really cool thing about the debugger is that I can add and remove breakpoints during runtime. So if I continue again, it will end up uh, c completing the execution of that endpoint call and I will get my message, goodbye world. So just to go through the controls a little bit more uh, of the debugger, if I go into, for example, the hello um, endpoint, I have various options here. I can step over and I can skip forward onto the next line in the file. I can also step into, and in this case, I'm actually gonna be going into uh, an instance of the greeting, and that will get me into say hello. And that's actually pretty cool because now I have access to self itself. I can have a look and see that this is a hello service greeting instance. And then it has, for example, the property mood, which will return happy. And actually, I, I can actually just do self and see what the value of mood is. And this is really, really helpful when you're exploring monolith code bases that are absolutely huge because you can see the type of object in the console that you're dealing with and you can actually just instigate its methods and see what it does, you know? I can even just do self dot um, say hello, say goodbye, and goodbye world will print out. And that's really, really useful for when things get a bit more complicated. And then I can just stop things. So that's it for this video. Um, please, please, please try to get in the habit of using these breakpoints in Visual Studio Code and doing away with those print statements because it's gonna save a huge amount of time in the long run. Uh, that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.